This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Good morning to those who are you who are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We greet you in the name of a risen Savior. We greet you in the name of a risen Savior. Our, our worship scripture this morning coming from Ephesians 2 and 10. So we are God hand workers created in Christ Jesus to do good work which God prepared in advance for us to do. To God be the glory. Scripture this morning comes from Matthew 20, verses 17 through 19. This was a time when Jesus predicted his death for the third time. So we started at, now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, and on his way he took the twelve aside and said to them, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests, the teachers, of the law. They will, they will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged, and crucified. And on the third day, he will rise. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come this morning as humble as we know how. We ask that you continue to bless us the way you have, Heavenly Father. We thank you for waking us up this morning putting clothes on our backs and foods on our table. We thank you for bringing us together this morning. Bringing us together just to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you've done and all you're about to do. Father, we know you were beaten, 
and bludgeoned and died. But on the third day, you got up with all power in your hand. And Father, we thank you. We bless your name this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We can do better than that. Clap your hands and say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This song just simply says, great are you, Lord. Greatly are you to be praised. Holy, holy. Holy, holy God. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship you. Maker. Maker of all universe. It's an honor. It's an honor just to stand before. Holy, holy. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship you. Maker of Maker all the universe. Of all universe. It's an honor. It's an honor just to stand before you. With a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. I lift my hands to you. Proclaim it, Lord, you reign. With a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. With my hands, Lord, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Holy, holy. Holy, holy God Almighty. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship you. Maker of all universe. It's an honor. Great my heart, be holy. God Almighty. It's a, it's a privilege to worship you. For a heart. With a grateful heart, I lift my heart. The way you are, you are. Where are you, Lord? Where are you, Lord? Ready to be praised. Ready to be praised. Father, you are. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Get 
God. God is great. Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Great is our God. He is worthy to be praised. I want to echo Brother Majors. There may become a time when we cannot praise him. So praise him while you have the chance, because he's a great and mighty God. Great and mighty God we do serve. Welcome. Welcome this morning. I want you to know that um, our pastor is well. He is out preaching today, and he has left us in charge, so we want to make sure that we do things decently and in order. Amen? Amen. So I want you to stand up and greet one another in Christian love. Act as if we love one another. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. If you want a hug, you can hug. If you don't, just give some virtual hugs. Amen. Amen. This is a good time if there are any children left in the sanctuary or any um, uh, preteens, anyone from grades 8 down to pre-K. If you're still in the sanctuary, you can go back for our Kingdom Kids. And I just want everyone to know that starting this month, the Kingdom Kids can be um, can go directly to the Fellowship Hall where they will um, have refreshments and then get their class. They don't have to come in and be dismissed, but in case there are some young people still in the sanctuary, you may leave and go to Kingdom Kids worship right now. Amen? And so it is giving time now, giving time. You know that's the wonderful part of the service where everybody can participate. And we get an opportunity to pour into our church so that we can not only meet our obligations here, our necessities, but we can also do the work of the Lord, do outreach work, amen, which is kingdom building work. So we're just not putting money in there, but we are pouring into the kingdom of God. And I just want you to remember that we are still in celebration of our 98th year of existence, amen. Let's give God some glory for 98 years. So if you have not yet finished giving or begun to give, um, toward our 98th anniversary assessment, which is $100 above our times and offering. You may do so still today. Also, as you're preparing for offering right now, I want to remind you that you can give not only in person, you can get an envelope from um, one of the ushers if you don't already have one, but you can use the Givelify app. 
the Givelify app. And for those of you who are out there in the virtual land there through YouTube or Facebook, you can mail in your offerings to Post Office Box 13219. That is Post Office Box 13219, Elliton Missionary Baptist Church at that post office. Amen. So won't you all stand as the ushers prepare you to um, give your offering. Amen. A round of applause and bless them. Amen. It's good to see some young people back on the usher board. Hallelujah. Has everyone had an opportunity to give? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to be here and to take part in this time of giving and to partake in this offering. We pray that all that we have placed in these baskets have come directly from our hearts. We have been cheerful givers, and we just pray that what we have given will be used to uplift and build up your kingdom and to help us to meet our needs here at home. Lord, we thank you today, and we bless your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. It's prayer time, it's prayer time, it's prayer time. Amen. What a privilege it is to be able to come to God in prayer. So we have some uh, prayer requests this morning that um, Minister Davis is going to take care of as he comes today to pray for us so that we can participate. I want you to know that we are participating. He's praying with us as well as for us. So we just want to participate along with him and we can stay with him. Amen. So I'm going to ask Minister Davis to come up and lead us. We always say lead us in prayer as you stand where you are. Or if you like, you can come to the altar because some of us have been coming to the altar. We're not afraid to touch and agree. Then you can come up to the altar, but do not feel um, that you have to. You can stand right where you are. All you have to do is speak to God. Amen. 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 To my father, children. When I got up this morning, I was reminded of something happened four years ago. Four years ago, I don't I believe it was the same Sunday.
when the pastor leaned over and asked me to be the COVID leader of the COVID, not knowing what COVID was, and I accepted it. And back then, I accepted an assignment that I didn't even know anything about COVID, didn't know what was going on. But this song, they sung this morning, they sang this song in the morning, said, Lord, where are thou? Four years ago, we could have said the same thing. When Kobe hit, we could have said, Lord, where are you? Where are you, Lord God? We know you exist, but where are you? Our prayer request this morning for Sister Beeman asking prayer request for the loss of her, for the family and the loss of her sister. We also praying for Brother Larry Collin and the loss of his brother. His sister, I'm sorry, please forgive me, his sister. And I think you lost someone too in your family, her niece. So just pray. Pray for me as I petition God on your behalf. Because we know that prayer is the key to the kingdom. But faith unlocks the door. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. I, I bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come. We come to you this morning as empty vessels. Desiring to be filled. Father God, we come to you. Just as the widow woman was. With the oil, we, we have a desire to be filled back up. Lord God, we come this morning lifting up Elerton Missionary Baptist Church and all of his members unto you. We start with the head of the church. We lift it up the pastor unto you, Lord God. We lifted up the deacons unto you, Lord God. We lifted up the usher board unto you, Lord God. We lifted up the members and the choir and the musicians unto you, Lord God. The minister stole down. We lift them up to you. Oh, Lord God, you've been so good to all of us. You've been better to us, Lord, than we even know how to be to ourselves. But Father God, the one that it will read, Sister Beeman and her family, Lord God, touch that family. It's only you, kid. Touch the Collins, Lord God. Touch each individual in here that's going through the loss of a loved one. Lord God, you're so good to us. You are so good to all of us. Lord God, we keep, we keep on coming this way because we hadn't got it right yet. And you still allow us another golden opportunity to try to work on it and try to constantly get it right. Lord God, you are so good to us, Lord God. We just we allow you to plead our case because you are so good to us, Lord God. We love you and we praise you and we glorify your name. Heavenly Father, we magnify your name. We worship and we adore your name. And Father God, the man who are going to bring your word this morning, we pray that you allow Brother Jelani Jones down in the deep secret of your treasure. Allow him down in the deep secret of your treasure. Allow him down in the deep secret of your treasure that he might be able to spawn upon your word this morning. He might be able to spawn upon your word this morning with boldness and with conviction. And Lord God, when he go into your word, I pray that some lost sinner, woman, boy, girl will come running asking what must I do to be saved? And Lord God, 
God, when you go into your word, I pray that your word will convict me, Lord God. Whatever I'm going through, Lord God, I pray that your word will convict the whole church. Your word, your word, your word, your word, your word, your word. It's in your word, Lord God. It's in your word, Lord God. It's in your name, Lord God. It's in your name, Lord God. It's in your name, Lord God. So when you stand on your word, when you stand in your place, fill him up, Lord God. Fill him up, Lord God. Fill him up, Lord God. And when he pour everything out, Lord God, I pray that you refill your line. That he can keep on running. He'll keep keep on running and telling other people about your goodness, about your mercy, about your grace, about your love, about your understanding. Yes, fill him up, Lord God. Run him over. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. Bless you. From our hearts to God's ear, amen. I do want to say this. Um, the person who lost a niece is Minister Artis, and the only reason I'm saying it is because she is over our pastoral care ministry. And that if we don't know who it is, we can't reach out to an individual. So I'm just giving you a name so that you will know that not only Brother Collins, his brother, that's what the other brother, Brother James Collins and Brother Larry Collins lost their sister, as well as um, uh, Sister Beeman losing her sister as well. But Minister Artis lost his niece. And we say these things so that we can be there for one another. And, sh and Sister Ar and Minister Artis is over our pastoral care. And I would be remiss if I did not assist my sister in, in, in her job. Amen. But now I have the privilege of introducing this morning's speaker. For those of you who may not know him, his name is Minister Jelani Jones, who has um, recently been ordained, so he can be referred to as Reverend Jelani Jones. <laughs> And it was ironically, before I left and went out of town, the last service I attended before this morning was the ordination of Minister uh, Jones and Minister Banks. So we're kind of doing full circle this morning. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Reverend Jones is my son. <laughs> when you get up here, you might see a little resemblance. I hope it's the godliness. But it's also, I want to say that um, he is indeed a man of God. God has answered my prayers when it has come to my son because he has indeed grown him in stature. And he does hold favor with God and with man. He is the, the reason you don't see him around here at Elaton, which is his home church, is that he is the minister of worship at the Trinity Baptist Church in Pontiac. <laughs> They pay him so he has to be there in order to get his money. But I think he would do that anyway because if those of you who've seen him as he's grown up in the church, my son is a worshiper. My stepmother a long time ago before she died, I used to always run over to him. He would be singing and just doing all this. She said, leave that boy alone. You know, when he worshiping. So I don't bother him when he worships anymore because I know that he loves the Lord. Um, he is a recent graduate of Cleary University, amen, where, <laughs> again, he was faithful enough, God was, to let me see him finish his college degree before I died. <laughs> you know how we parents are, I hope you're going to get that degree before I die, so he did. But I just want to, to, to um, tell you that, uh, I want you to pray for him as he comes up, but... 
you all know him. I'm just excited that he's here on this first day that I'm back, and I'm looking forward to what he says and, and what the Lord has given him for us. So just um, continue to encourage Minister Jones and all of our people in, in his age range. You know, we always remember them as little ones, but these are grown-up people now, you know. And so uh, we want to give him honor where honor is due. So the next voice you will hear after our praise team sings will be that of the Reverend Jelani Jones. How many of you love the Lord on today? I love him more than anything. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you.
worship and adore you. worship him. Tell him how much you love him. Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I worship you. Come on, I don't hear nothing. Come on and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you more than anything. that would have been good for someone who you just paid a few dollars to see at a concert. Or it would be good for some man, get some more to follow you in this monitor, please. It would be good for someone um, that you paid to see at the AMC or at the Star Theater. But can somebody give God more than just a pity pat? Come on, we can do, we can do better than that. Can we get, can we give God glory, adoration, and praise for the things that he has done? For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. I'm going to give you a minute just to get the sound right. I got to hear myself. Come on, give God glory, adoration, praise. Test the one good. He is due all of the worship, honor, and the praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Is anybody else other than me that is glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? He didn't have to let me live. That's my testimony. He didn't have to let me live. But I read back like the old churches say, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. One more time. Give honor to God, who is indeed the head of our life, to Jesus the Christ, who is the lover of our soul, and the Holy Spirit that has already saturated this place we call sanctuary. We greet you, all of my brothers and sisters, all of my co-laborers in the gospel, and to our pastor in his absence. Come on, can you help me give God glory for our pastor? Pastor Gerald T. Pastor... Pastor Gerald T. Miller, in his absence, we thank God um, that he allowed us the opportunity to um, uh, preach uh, about our convictions, about our Savior. And instead, he could have called any preacher up here. But I'm grateful that he has allowed a little old me to come home uh, to say my Easter speech a little early. In Jesus' name. In, Je <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, there's a word from the Lord today, church. Uh, if you will, um, turn to the book of Ephesians. I believe uh, it is still the custom of the church to stand in a reading and reverence of our, of God's word. Ephesians 
if I had some voice, I wouldn't even use the mic. I'd just talk to y'all, but I need a little help today, man. A little help today. A little help today. So good to see all you today. Ephesians, uh, the second chapter. We're going to begin reading at, at verse 8. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of God's word. This is beautiful Bible y'all gave me during ordination. I'm going to read from this today. Oh, that's so beautiful and soft and supple. Look at this leather. It was so good. Thank you for the gift, church. Thank you. We're going to read from this Bible today. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8. I'm going to read and commence at verse 10. Very familiar passage of scripture. Good. Thank you. Um, word of God reads, God saves you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Somebody say, a gift from God. Put a pen, we're gonna bring that right back. Salvation is not a reward for good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. Somebody shout back at me, masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. For the time that it is ours to share, uh, I would like to preach from the thought, living an amazing life. Living an amazing life. God, we thank you. Right now, well, we study, but we need your strength. We pray we need your power. It is our prayer, God, that you hide us behind your precious cross yes. so that people will not see me, but they only will see thee. It's in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we do pray and let every glad heart say amen, amen. and praise God. Living an amazing life. <clears throat> A church believing God and belonging to God sets you up for some incredible and amazing blessings. If it is your desire to live a life that has purpose, I want to share with you that that goal is not achievable nor is it obtainable apart from a real and authentic relationship with God. Because God is the creator of life, and therefore it is only God who can give meaning to life. A belief in God and belonging to God, church, uh, gives one an opportunity to reject a life of thoughtlessness and pointlessness and to accept an experience that is filled with blessings, miracles, joy, and God's favor. And yet I must sadly report that while all of these joys are a present possibility, uh, there are many of us who are living beneath our God-appointed opportunity and God-given privilege. Uh, there are some who live beneath this amazing benefit, not uh, because they lack material means, not because they lack education or social status, but they lack it because there are many people who have all of these material means, social status and position, but they live beneath their right and privilege in Christ because they are living without purpose, point, reason, and intention in church. We must realize that many of us are unaware of the reason for which we have been created. And that's why at the very start of my little Easter speech, I want to make sure we know that it's important for us to understand that in order to live an amazing life, it has much to do with you knowing your purpose in life. Yeah, for, for far too many of us, life is just a series of days that turn into weeks and weeks that turn into months and months that turn into years and years that just go ahead and fade away. But now uh, at the age of 45, I realize some things. I may still be youthful, uh, but I'm a little older now. I might be a little wiser. And now I can testify and agree with the hymnologist who said, time is filled with swift transition. 
Yeah, yeah. And if no one else has told you, I wanted to warn you uh, that the older you get, the faster that time flies by. Uh, This is why you have to understand that it's essential, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, that you earnestly seek God's plan for your life. Yeah, because I can remember sitting up in my mother's house, opening up her refrigerator, eating up all her food. Now I could just blink and I turn, I'm pushing the one, pushing down the cart, trying to balance the checks and the balances, like saying what I need and what I need to put in my own refrigerator. Time is filled with swift transitions. I remember walking up and down the hallways in school trying to figure out what my outfit is going to be for the first day of high school and now I got a high school student. Time is filled with swift transitions. I remember one day going to the beauty store getting a Diane soft bristle uh, wave brush and having a can of sporting waves and a a do-rag and now I got to put a razor to my head. I know somebody else looking at you that this who can testify that time is filled with swift transitions. I know I'm not by myself. I know some of you remember those times, but trust me, I know that time flies and therefore it is time for us to turn our potential into possibility. Uh, Because God's desire for each and every one of us, church, is that we maximize our moments and that we spend our time living an amazing life. Yeah, God wants our, me- our, our moments to be meaningful. God wants our days to be dynamic. God wants our weeks to be wonderful works of his amazing grace. And what I came to tell you is that if you want an incredible, uh, in, an amazing life, you have to understand that people around you are watching you because they are to be won by your witness and to be persuaded by your presence. And, and I'm a witness that God is able to do such a work in each and every one of our lives and not with only amazing others that if you look in the mirror and can be honest with yourself, it amaze you. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody who can be honest today, that you don't know how to explain it, you don't know how to rationalize it, you can't pull it out and write it down, but if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, I know there's a few other people other than me who can testify they wouldn't be here today. I I don't know if it had not been for the Lord, I, I wouldn't be able to testify. I know I don't deserve it, and I know I wasn't good enough for it, and Anybody else other than me can testify that you know you're blessed and highly favored and you can't even explain it. But, but I know one thing, I, I, God has opened some doors for you. I, I know somebody in here can say God has made a way for me. Yeah, I'm talking to some of those who didn't have the GPA, nor did you have the degree, but not only did you get the job, you got the promotion. I'm talking about some of you all who didn't have the experience, didn't have the pedigree, didn't come from that family, but God lifted you up and used you. You didn't do anything thing right but God blessed you anyhow and I have to tell you and pause parenthetically uh, everybody around you won't be able to handle you having a blessed and amazing life Uh, the Bible calls them uh, transgressors Uh, today I'm going to call them haters And the truth is, all of us, no matter how old, how young, or how in between we may be, all of us experience some haters or some transgressors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's not be superficial. We're not talking about all the creature comforts in life. Uh, we're talking about some people who can't handle you got your joy. They can't handle you got your peace. <laughs> They can't handle that you're in your right mind when you should be crazy. They can't handle that you sit in a congregation next to blessed people and that you get poured into every week by a blessed pastor. See, they can't handle those things. But you got to be honest and tell the people that, hey, you know that you're a trip. I know that you're a trip, but I don't know why you're miserable. I don't know why your face all turned up. But I want to tell you one thing, uh, that things could be better if you just turn around and give God thanks for what you do have. Because I came to tell somebody that it ain't no secret what God can do. You got to testify to that person that what God has done for me, he can do the same. He can do the same for you. Yeah. You can turn and tell your transgressor next time they come to you. You ain't got to be mad at me, but you can just be glad with me and watch God do something amazing for you too. Can I get a witness in here today? Uh, The Bible in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul is reminding us uh, that our salvation comes uh, by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. 
Uh, that is to say that none of us uh, can claim credit for our salvation. Uh, we haven't been that good. We haven't uh, walked that right. We have uh, not lived the life that meticulously uh, to deserve, to deserve the God, God's grace. But salvation, as I told you, is a gift uh, from God and an expression of the incredible grace of God. It is received through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing we can ever do can earn our salvation. Our works are not enough to merit our salvation. I don't care uh, how long you've been in church. You could have been born on that pew right there. I, I don't care how long because the Bible says uh, and reminds us that all of our righteousness we are still just as filthy rags and therefore we were not to become saved because we are saved. And it is on the tail end of this text that Paul pins these words that I want to deal with in my time left here today for we are his workmanship. Don't close your Bibles too soon. In the New Living Translation, it says that we are his masterpiece, uh, that God has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he has planned for us to do. He made you new so you can do the things that God has planned for you. Hmm. He knows he knows the plan uh, for you. That means, church, that you are saved, that I am saved, that we are saved for a reason. First thing we need to realize today, if we want to live an amazing life, is uh, we have to recognize that we represent God. We represent God. Uh, the reason God leaves us here on earth after we get saved is so that we can represent God in his world. We are God's representatives. We uh, have to understand that knowing who we are and whose we are and what we are enables us to live a life of purpose and power as people of God. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, how then do you view yourself? I mean, literally, church, if you could turn yourself inside out, uh, how uh, do you... How do you view yourself? How would you describe yourself if I gave you pen and paper right now? Uh, uh, how do you define yourself if you were listed in the West Webster Dictionary? What adjectives come to mind uh, when you think of who you are? And do those words line up to God's purpose in your life? Now don't say it out loud because some of us have words we can't utter here. Some non-Sunday school words about ourselves. But some of these things, is anybody understand that the words that describe you should also align with God's will and his purpose for your life? And if I could pause parenthetically, that's the reason why we got some problems because some of us are miserable. Some of us are messy. Some of us are mischievous. Oh, instead of being joyful and peaceful and, 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 and encouraging. What words and adjectives do they say about you? Workmanship, the Greek translates as something uh, that has been made. The word is used to describe uh, the word uh, the work of God, the creator. Uh, this word uh, speaks to the power, might, majesty, work, and wonder of what God has already done. Uh, the work is the reflection of the worker. Uh, the creation is the reflection of the creator. The composition is the reflector, uh, the reflection of the composer. And we are expressions of what God says he deserves to see. Don't miss this. And since God believes that he deserves to see us live, he gives us life so that we deserve, that we give us lives that we don't deserve. Let me say that again. Since God believes that he deserves to see us live, he gives us lives that we don't deserve. My reason to live is because God said he deserves to see me live. Not so I can walk around, not so you can walk around and just live your life and pay bills and wake up and go to work. But God created you and he made you a grace gift just for him. 
We are told in uh, the, uh, Psalm 19 and 1 uh, that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows forth his handiwork. Uh, Psalm uh, 92 and 5 declares, how wonderful and majestic are your works, O Lord. Psalm 104, 24 says, uh, declares, it says, uh, what a wonderful, mighty world, O God. You made it with wisdom at your side. The whole earth overflows with your wonderful creation. Did you check out all of those descriptions in the psalm? Just as those words describe the created order of the works of the earth, it should also describe you and I as the workmanship of God. The psalmist reflects upon us. The psalm in Psalms 8 and 3, it says, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes you have ordained praise. When I consider the heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you have ordained what is a man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him that you have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor what is your point to Jay Jones I tell you uh, what is it that you want us to see about having an amazing life what I want you to see is that you too are the workmanship of God you are the byproduct of the creative splendor and awesome genius of our God yeah, yeah. When I look at you, when people look at you, uh, they shouldn't just see all your frailties and all maybe some of our fickleness. But when people look at you, they ought to gain a sense of the creative majesty of our glory, our glorious God. Uh, you are a wonder to behold. Matter of fact, I know we might want to talk to our neighbors. Talk to yourself and declare it over your life that I am a wonder to behold. Yeah, every now and then, somebody should be able to look at you and say, God is an awesome God. Every once in a while, somebody should be able to have a conversation and say, what a mighty God we serve. When people see what you've been through, when people see what you've overcome, and you still smiling, I'm talking about that kind of praise that you should be crying, but you got a smile on your face. I'm talking about when you're running around and people, ain't nobody even chasing you kind of praise. They should see how awesome God is to your awesome and amazing life. Yeah. 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 Not because of anything that you do. Uh, uh, but, 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 but simply because you are who God made you to be. Yeah. Your value, your worth uh, your significance are not a reflection of what you do, but it is uh, what has the value that God has given you through Jesus Christ. Your value is based upon uh, you being a masterpiece of God. And somebody ought to celebrate the fact that God shaped you and laid his hands on you, molded you and made you into something and somebody. Uh, if I could give you an illustration. If I paint a picture, went down to the art store, and I, I got some canvas, and I, I got some oils and some paint brushes, and uh, I paint the picture for you, and I put it in a frame and try to sell it to you, you may feel sorry for me reaching your pocket and give me what you have for it, because you have a relationship with me, not because of my artistic uh, stature. Uh, but if you take that same canvas and that same frame and that uh, same uh, 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 paint and, 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 and brush and put it in the hands of Picasso, it's worth millions of dollars. Uh, the fact is, he could put that same thing uh, in, on the market and it would be worth infinitely more, not because of what the materials were, but, but who painted it. And that is the same value and the truth about how God values us and your value through God. See, because you have to understand, church, that you are a designer's original. Yeah, you're not a knockoff. You, you're not what Theo had on with a, a Gordon Gartrell. You, have, you are an original. Uh, and see, what God has done, he has made you uh, where there will never uh, be another like you. No one else will have your fingerprint. Nobody else, uh, beloved, is going to have your DNA. No one else is going to have your personality and your swag. Nobody else is going to have your sense of humility. But what I want to tell you that you need to know how original 
original and watch this unique you are yeah you are an autographed original signed by God yeah and, and I, re I realized and recognize that uh, some people can't rejoice here because when we look at our lives, our tendency is to see more of the mess and less of the miracle. I think I said something, but y'all missed it. When you see, you don't see yourself as God sees you. You see yourself as your environment and your circumstances and your ailments and your issues. But God today is telling you to redeem your life and take your life back because the devil is a liar. See, the devil want to make you look in the mirror that's all fogged and dirty. So when you see yourself in the mirror, you can't see a clear image of yourself. But you today are a masterpiece. I just need five of you. I make six against way back here. I may have some mess. I may have some trouble, I may have some issues, but through it all, I know God, I'm God's handiwork, and God has his hand on me. So if God has his hand on me, I can wipe the mirror off so I can see what God has created me to be. Truth of the matter is, not only do we have an amazing life through representing God, we also uh, have an amazing life by redeeming our life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Redeeming my life. Take your life back. Take your life back. Uh, how are we to redeem our, our lives in order that we may have an amazing life? I submit today that is by placing our trust and dependency on Jesus Christ. For Paul continues in verse 10 by declaring that we are created in Christ Jesus. In the New Living Translation, it reads that he has created us anew. I like that word, anew in Christ Jesus. Uh, the presence of sin in us corrupts and clouds our judgment and our perspective. It diminishes our sense of who we are and what we can achieve. Can I give you an example? I, 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 if I gave you a brand new uh, 2024 for BMW, Poppy. This is for you. Lift your hands. If I gave you uh, this brand new 2024 BMW, I know you want it. When I get my money, you're the first person I'm coming to see. Poppy, I gave you this, Deke, and you drove off, and you were so excited about it, and you slammed it to a fence. You didn't get hurt. Airbags didn't deploy, but you got a little damage to it, right? Uh, 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 your vehicle uh, would immediately diminish in value. Yeah, you just pulled off the lot, little scratch, but immediately the, the value of that BMW would diminish. It would still be a BMW, it would still have the logo, the leather would still be soft and buttery and smell good, but the damage it sustained would drive its value down, God help me. But the integrity of the vehicle still has been compromised, its appraised value, what others think it's worth, uh, would be lower because its original state has been altered. Come here, church. Now, sin does the same thing to you and me. It cor corrupts the integrity of who we are and who we're created to be because we were not created for sin, so we were created to be the righteousness of God. So whenever sin is introduced and we bump into a, a fence, the result on the inside is shame. And the devil uses shame to lessen the estimate of your value in your mind. The devil wants you to believe that just because you just got a little ding that your life is totaled out, that you need to call progressive and, and get a loner but to God to the truth of the matter is the enemy is trying to distract you and think that your life is so raggedy for a little bump that you need to get told to the tow yard but the devil is a lie and you need to square your head back and tell the devil that even though I've been through what I've been through God still sees the value in me and he has restored me I'm talking to those who know you didn't have to pay a deductible you didn't have to wait it wasn't a rental car waiting for you but you're redeemed, and if you're redeemed, you ought to say so. So if I could pause right here, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You need to hear me today, church. I want to stay on this car thing for a minute. Uh, 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 uh. The only hope for a vehicle once it's been wrecked lies in the ability for it to get restored. If I total my car, the only way I can get it repaired if I take it to someone who can repair everything that I've sustained. And that's why you just missed your shout. Because even though you're wrecked, you know who can put it back together. I remember when I was a little boy, they said Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. But I somebody I ain't an egg I'm a redeemed 
Hallelujah. Believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I fall, I serve a God that can pick me back up, dust me off, and restore me, not so I can look good, but I can get back on the road and serve him. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I'm glad today that after all that I've been through, after every door I walked in and I shouldn't, after going to places and being with people I shouldn't have been, I'm grateful today that after every crash and collision that life has dealt me, that I can go to God to be restored, and all I need is Jesus. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature, a new creation. Through Christ, God restores us to what and who he wants us to be. Mm. Uh, you should accept it and claim it and believe it for yourself uh, because the text says uh, what the devil has done has been undone. And uh, in Christ I'm restored, redeemed, renewed, I'm revived, and I am repaired. I can live an amazing life and I'm on my last point. Uh, I can live an amazing life by first representing God. I can live, you can live, we can live an amazing life by redeeming our life. And lastly, uh, we can live an amazing life by reclaiming our value. Uh, when we redeem our lives, God preserves us. Woo, that word preserves. He preserves us so that we can reclaim our value. Mm -mm -mm. Let me give it to you this way. Uh, uh, Y'all know my mother just blessed bless her soul. She just introduced me. Uh, she she is uh, she's my heart, and I know she loves me with all her heart. But one day, uh, uh, December the twenty fifth in nineteen ninety, uh, I was the only day I thought my mother didn't love me. I was Christmas of nineteen ninety. Anybody that can push their eyes back to around my age, the biggest thing for Christmas was the Sega Genesis. All oh, that year, it was the Sega Genesis. Oh my God. So before that, uh, the video game system was a Nintendo. Anybody remember this? Don't let me be by myself. Uh, so I asked for nothing else on my list. I put out a, new, a note paper, I wrote down one Sega Genesis and slid it to her early in the year because I knew it was released and I wanted it. I knew my mother loved me. I'm the only child. She only got one to get one gift and it's the Sega Genesis. So, so I unplugged my Nintendo and I wrapped it up. <laughs> took all the games, pushed them to the side because I was getting my Sega Genesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so I, I was sitting at the, uh, the foot of the tree. Y'all know how y'all used to do the tree. Y'all used to put all the gifts around there, wrap them all up for your children. Well, I'm looking, I'm tearing open this when I know the shape of this and the circumference. It's not my Sega Genesis. Oh, it's socks. Any other year, I'll be ready to throw the socks at my mama, but I didn't. Oh, mama, look at these socks. These socks are the most beautiful socks I've ever seen. I was appreciative for all of my gifts. I can't even remember what the rest of the gifts were, beloved, because in 1990, on Christmas, son, all I wanted was my Sega Genesis. So it was one box that was tucked off to the corner. I said, my mama loves me. I love my mama more than anything. Listen, I know this was a war, so I was anticipating. I was building it up. I had some fake tears in my eyes. Like, this is my Christmas. This is my favorite Christmas of all time. So I get there, and you know, instead of ripping it over, I just took the seam of it and popped the first little tape and popped the other tape. And I closed my eyes, and I ripped the paper up. And Robert, when I opened the eyes... It wasn't my Sega Genesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a Nintendo case to preserve your, yes, your old Nintendo in it to keep it new. So I looked at my mom, I said, well, I guess I'm going to go upstairs now and play with my storage box. 
Now, for years, I, it took probably about two years ago, I was mad at my mama. But it wasn't until recently that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and turned my childhood disappointment into a divine res- revelation. See, uh, 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 I recently read uh, online that out of all of the video game systems created in the last 50 years, uh, the Nintendo uh, is ranked as the best of all time. And if it was anybody who had an original Nintendo and that was operable, uh, that it would have more value than it did in 1990. See, if you would have preserved your Nintendo, you would be able to sell it more for more than it was worth in 1990. Uh, that revelation left me looking at my mama and saying I'm about to come over and get in the basement and see if I can find that old storage box with my Nintendo. Because uh, if I only knew uh, that the worst gift was going to be valuable 25 years later, oh, I would have never just tossed it to the side. But come to church, if you only knew how much you were worth, uh, God preserved you so you can reclaim your value. Uh, see, God, in spite of everything, put you in the box and preserved you. Uh, that's called justification. That's called sanctification. He preserved you. He sealed you with the Holy Spirit. And now when they open you up, you've been through all type of trials and tribulations since 1990. You've been through all kind of issues, but God still, in spite of you, as a matter of fact, people play with you like they did that Nintendo. But God preserved you, so he held your value in spite of. That's why I can't nobody be ashamed and let nobody say that you've changed, you've been changed. See, see, now that you know you've changed, God's grace is real and authentic in your life. See, you've got value because you are a masterpiece. You've got value because you have been made to sit in high places with Christ Jesus. And if you can pause here, that's a time for us to give God glory and honor because no matter how life is trying to make you miserable, you still have your joy. I I need somebody who could just open up and look back where God has brought you from and say, I still got my peace. I still got my mind when everything wants me to go crazy. But it's because God, in spite of it all, through it all, he preserved me. Yeah, somebody shout back at me. I'm a masterpiece. No, 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 no. The Bible says not that we can boast on ourselves, but do this. Say, I'm God's masterpiece. That's it. That's it, church, because you have an amazing life because uh, you are reclaiming your value. Uh, 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 I'm seeing God's plan for me to live an amazing life come to pass because I, 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 I get to represent God. I get to redeem my life. I get to reclaim my value, and I get to rejoice over my destiny. Uh, Paul says in verse 10, for which God prepared for you beforehand. You have a destiny before you, and that's why you can't give up now. There are some great things that God had planned for you before you even got here. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, uh, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord's plans to prosper you and, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Tell somebody the plans have already been made. The design has already been established. The blueprint has already been drawn out. God's work has already been prepared for you. And the awesome one is God has already prearranged. God is not making this thing up as we go along like some of us do. He's already established it. You are here for a reason. I came to declare that you're here to do something good, something useful. You're here to be beneficial. You are here to do something meaningful, something vital, something important, something remarkable something significant, something awesome, something spectacular, something excellent. If that you believe that over your life, I just need you one more time to shout, I'm God's masterpiece. Yes, God, you are here for a reason. I don't care how young you are, you're here for a reason. I don't care how many years you got on your life, you're here for a reason. No matter what you've gone through, things that you've seen, things that you haven't overcome, you're here for a reason. I don't care what the devil told you, I don't care what your parents told you, I don't care what your preacher told you. If it ain't the truth of living God, you are here for a reason. 
how do I know I'm worth something? How uh, do I know that uh, God has made me anything more than what I am? How do I know I have value? How do I know that even as raggedy and messed up and tore up I, as I am, that God still sees value in me? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's because God's value is on you because God's got his name on you. Yeah, remember I just told you to declare it over your life that you God's masterpiece. The reason I know, and I can say it, I don't know what you're going through, but I know you still got value on you uh, because God's got his name on you. Uh, uh, I'm done, I'm done. I'm reminded of an interview uh, that Eddie Murphy had with Jim, Jimmy Kimmel a couple years ago. Uh, and he revealed to Jimmy on his late night show that he has ownership of the famous, famous patent called Sugar Shack. It was created by the legendary uh, artist Ernie Barnes. Y'all know uh, Sugar Shack from uh, 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 Good Times, the painting with them dancing in the juke joint. And it was also the cover, cover of Marvin Gaye's album. Don't act like Y'all don't know that. Y'all listen to Marvin Gaye. Uh, 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 so, 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 so. Uh, what Eddie says, he purchased this uh, painting uh, back at an estate sale for Marvin Gaye years ago, and he bought it for fifty thousand dollars. Jimmy revealed to Eddie that the painting was just sold in the auction, uh, an art auction just recently. Eddie smiled and said, uh, 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 he cleared up that rumor and said, uh, 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 Eddie said that the duplicate of that painting just sold for 16 million. See, Jimmy said that the painting was just sold for 16 million dollars. Eddie said that 16 million dollar uh, painting was a duplicate. At my house is the original. Church, Eddie Murphy knows that he owns the original masterpiece because anytime an artist completes a work of art, they validate it uh, with a signature. <laughs> and the work of art's value is determined by the authenticity of the original signature. Uh, and as I take my seat today, I came to tell you that God has completed an original masterpiece when he created you and God has validated you by applying his name on you. Anybody in here know that if you didn't have a signature on it, then it can't be called an original. If it don't have a signature on it, it can't be called a masterpiece. Oh, but God didn't sign his uh, masterpiece in here and over there with ink. But does anybody know that God signed his masterpiece with his blood? The blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So when God made you, and when God made you, and when God made you, and when God made me, he went down, oh Lord, to that day on Calvary. Oh, when they hung him high, they stretched him wide. Where did he get the blood from? They pierced him in the side, and the blood came streaming down. And with that blood, he wrote his name on you. And with that blood, he signed his name on you. And with his blood, he signed his name on you. With his blood, he signed his name on me. But I'm so glad he stayed dead. Because if he didn't stay dead, all night Friday, if he didn't stay dead, all day Saturday, he stayed dead. All night, Saturday night. But I believe this is a Baptist church. Help me shout, oh, On a Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Power so you can walk right. Power so you can talk right. Power so you can live right. Power so you can fight another day. But I need somebody in here that can testify. I know God covered me with his blood, the blood that purchased me, the blood that redeemed me, the blood that justified me, the blood that renewed me, the blood that rescued me, the blood that validated me, the blood that washed me, the blood that cleansed me, the blood that covered me, the blood that purged me, the 
the blood that sanctified me that's the blood that gave me an amazing life if you know you have an amazing life shout back yes 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 anybody grateful today looking back over your life to see where God brought you from if it had not for the Lord that was on your side you be somewhere laying down in a ditch you be somewhere with a straight good jacket on but because God made you in his image and his likeness you can stand here boldly to say that you've been redeemed bought with a price and that God he saved your life is there anybody here that want to help me close by saying God is worthy to be praised. If you know he's worthy, help me shout worthy. Help me shout worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the redeemed. That means you've been born with the price. I said let the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth and say so. I need you to throw your hands up, throw your head back, and say, ah, I've been redeemed. Yes, shout yes, yes, shout yes. Last time, church, let the redeemed of the Lord open your mouth, say so. Maybe the last time, open your mouth and say so. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. Yes to his word. Yes every day. Open up your mouth. Say yes. 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 Clap your hands. As we all stand, let us all stand. The doors of the church are open. If you want to live this amazing life, God offers you an amazing life. If you're not a part of the church, If you want to be a family of faith, if you want to be a part of a church that lives amazing life, the doors of the church are open to you. God has his hands reached out to you. The great thing about God that we serve, no matter what you feel about yourself, no matter what others feel about you. The welcome is to everyone. Because God loves each and every one of us. 
and the amazing life is extended to all of us. Maybe you don't think your life amazing, but it can be. Because we serve a savior that can change your life because he loves you. He will place himself inside of you to guide you and lead you. And you can be a part of this amazing life when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and rose for your salvation. And you can become a part of the church, a part of the family of God. If you want to live an amazing life, you can represent God. He also redeems our lives and reclaims our values to who we are. You are a child of God. So the doors of the church are open. Maybe you're a Christian, but you don't have a church family to worship with, to pray with, to cry with. In the Missionary Baptist Church, we stand our hands to you so we all can reach that higher ground. If you're on YouTube, Facebook, just text your name to join at elintonmbc.org. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You may take your seats. And let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that word we heard. Amen. Living amazing life. Thank you, Minister Jones, for that powerful word. Let's be a blessing to this man of God. We ask that the deacons come with some baskets and just come on up and give your offering. You can offer, give your offering through also Giblify as guest preacher. And come on up, stand everyone, and just come on around, whether you have anything or not. Be a blessing. You also can uh, cash at, at dollar sign primo, P-R-I-M-O 923. Cash at Minister Jones at dollar sign primo, P-R-I-M-O 923. And also you can use your Giblify app at guest preacher. Let's be a blessing to this man of God. Disregard that cash app. That was the wrong cash app. It's dollar sign Jelani L. Jones. You can cash out dollar sign Jelani L. Jones. Amen? All right. Thank you, Minister. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, how we thank you for your word and the power of your word, Lord. And because of you, Lord, we can live an amazing life because who you are and what you can do in our lives. So we open our hearts to you, Lord. We ask that you would bless this gift, this love offering to Minister Jones, Lord, that it be a blessing to him, Lord. We thank you once again for your word and your love. This is our prayer in the strong, magnificent name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. In case you're asking, it's J E L A N I. J E L A N I L Jones. Amen. All right, that is a word. I'm a proud mama this morning. When you see answered prayer, amen. We have just a few, just a few, just a few, few ministry highlights that we want to share with you this morning before you leave. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know that there will not be Bible study this week because we will be um, participating in the Michigan District Annual Session and Congress and, um, and pastor is teaching as well. He's uh, first uh, he's first vice president of the Congress. I'm second vice president. So we will be there, and uh, those who would be teaching want to be there as well. So they will not um, uh, be teaching this coming Wednesday morning or afternoon, in the evening. But we will pick up with, um, I, I think it's the, it's the road to Emmaus, the first one, or whatever, Peter, whatever. Chapter 4. We'll pick up with Chapter 4 Wednesday after next. Amen. And, and speaking of the district, we want to make sure that we're all in attendance next week, Monday through Thursday. Um, I think it starts at 530. And we want to participate. You don't have to pay anything. The church will have paid its assessment. And so come out. We are offering, um, there are three uh, seminars being offered. One is on teaching. Um, that has impact. That's the one that pastors teach. But we also have two others. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, Quantes Presley, Third New Hope, he's going to be teaching on social justice in the church. And then uh, we do know Minister April Rogers. She will be teaching on evangelism in your everyday life. Amen. So we have three great seminars three great seminar instructors who are going to be there. You do not want to miss it. And the annual session is being open tonight with uh, a musical at Galilee. And last year, I, we were way over on Eight Mile a couple of times, and I told them, my people love uh, the church and they love our pastor, <laughs> but can you all have it on the east side for a change? So I want you to know that the Michigan District Baptist Association will be in session at the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church on the east side of Detroit. So please don't make a liar out of me. I need you all to turn out, turn out, turn up, come on, because it is on the east side. And I, told, I know how you all don't like coming on the west side, although I come on the east side all the time. I want you to show up and support us. Uh, Dr. Nelson is the Congress president, and um, Dr. Orville Lule John is our moderator. Amen? And so today, thank you, I was just going to say that, and we're opening up at Galilee with a musical at 4 o'clock, and some of our choir members will be in the choir. Amen? So we want to come out and support them. And um, I, we, I'm, I'm Miss Choirs, so come on out and support our choirs and, and support the Michigan District this afternoon. Um, I'm going to ask Candace Niemer, is Dr. Niemer in the house? <laughs> I like calling her Dr. Niemer. Dr. Candace Niemer is going to come up and highlight our health fair that we're having. Come on up, Dr. Niemer. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, so good morning, y'all. Um, I just wanted to highlight that on March 30th, we will be having our um, very own health fair here at our church. Um, it's going to have some vendors here that I think you all will be very interested in doing. We're going to provide us with some resources, screenings if we need them. Um, it's open for everybody, so I want you to bring your family out. This will include kids and adults. Um, we have some health sessions lined up for all of you to participate in if you're able to. A lot of interesting things. Some of our very own um, people here in the church are going to be presenting some of that information. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, we will have like um, light refreshments, a few raffles for the people who come out. Um, and I just really want you guys to try and attend. I know it'll be a very busy weekend with it being Easter weekend, but... Um, 
I want to see everybody out here if they're able to come from 10 to 2 on that Saturday. Um, we worked really hard, me and the team did, to kind of put this together so that we can have something for our church um, that will provide us with the things that we need. So um, in addition to that, we have the pharmacy that did the immunizations. He's going to be one of the vendors that are here. So please see Sister Norma Raw. She'll be collecting names so that I can get a collection of the vaccinations you may want on that day that I can supply to the pharmacist who will provide them for you on that day. I uh, think I hit everything. Make sure you pick up a flyer. If you don't need one for yourself, take one and hand it out to friends, family, wherever you work, hang it up in your workplace. This is meant to be a community um, health fair, and so I'm hoping that we can not only bring our congregation out, but those members of the community and others as well. Okay, before we go home, one last announcement. Um, you know, I've been out of time, but I have just learned that uh, also uh, Deacon Gordon has lost his son. Um, so he is too among the bereaved. So let's uh, also pour out our love to um, Deacon Gordon. I don't have any, and I'm not going to start, I don't have any details for anybody today but if you would see the individuals whose names we have called out i'm sure they can fill you in amen okay let's all stand it's time to go home we have heard from the lord amen we heard in song and prayer and in the preached word what a blessing we've had this morning amen so it is now time for our benediction eyes raised heads i'm not going to try to <laughs> replicate replicate pastor but I do want to say now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever and the church says amen amen, amen. you are dismissed